Hello and welcome to the Fantastic Short Story Society. I am usually joined with my co-host Max Tim, uh, but he is in Los Angeles now. I myself just got back from Los Angeles. We've had a great time. Uh, we did a lot of shooting. I shot a lot of interviews. The content will be coming out fast and plenty and high quality, if I do say so myself, uh, over on the ISA website. Uh, it's always a blast going out and playing in our old hometown. Max had a wonderful writer's retreat through his Story Farm Consultancy, and he is going to be making the uh, the long cross-country trip back home. So I'm going to do a couple of episodes really quickly, and then we will dive in hard into summer blockbuster season. But to start, there was a movie that the description caught my eye so much that I thought, well, I want to jump in to see what this is. Might it be the next Everything Everywhere All at Once, the kind of indie darling that's that's a little outside the box, unusual, and maybe could capture everyone's attention? And of course, who is putting it out but A24, which is always a good start when you're looking for a unique voice, a unique story. So I'll just jump in right away to how I even found this, uh, because it's not one that's gotten a lot of attention yet. I'm a big fan of tracking the box office numbers day in, day out, week in, week out. Uh, and Janet Planet, which really, it just came out last week as I'm recording this, but it's expanding wide in the coming days. I don't know how wide it's going to expand. Uh, but yeah, this was the logline that caught my attention. In rural western Massachusetts, 11-year-old Lacey spends the summer of 1991 at home enthralled by her own imagination and the attention of her mother, Janet. As months pass, three visitors enter their orbit, all captivated by Janet and her spellbinding nature. In her solitary moments, Lacey inhabits an inner world so extraordinarily detailed that it begins to seep into the outside world. So right away, there is just so much possibility there for amazing visuals. We don't really know a thing about Lacey other than that she has a great imagination and her, her world might be very small, which is why she has a big imagination to try to have fun with her world, to try to entertain herself. I'm really curious to see what is in store for us. And right now it just lists drama on here as the genre. Obviously it takes place in 1991 as well. So you have a possibility of having fun with the time period. And I always love looking at the movie poster and I was honestly kind of expecting something more spectacular and maybe I'll be on the completely wrong track and that it's not going to be as over the top because this is a very modest poster as well. You see it was at Telluride, New York Film Festival, coming of age, mother-daughter portrait. I mean, we're seeing things, they're sideways, but again, not anything over the top, not anything in the world of everything, everywhere, all at once. So Maybe it's not going to be a visual spectacle, which is what I'm expecting. Again, with the idea that someone's imagination, a child's imagination is taking over uh, her reality. I mean, you could obviously go very dark or scary with this as well, but I'm not getting that vibe whatsoever. Before jumping into it, I always love to take a quick look at the writer and or director. In this case, it's Annie Baker. Uh, this is not the first thing she's written. With Amazon, she worked on the TV show I Love Dick uh, with Katherine Hahn and Kevin Bacon. Uh, she's also married to Nico Bomback, which makes her brother-in-law Noah Bomback. Uh, and honestly, who someone's family is means nothing. However, she certainly has a tremendous amount of people in her immediate inner circle that she can talk story with and who know story very, very well. Again, directorial debut for Annie Baker. Can I hold your hand? It's kind of hard for me to fall asleep when we're holding hands. How about for a minute? You know what's funny? What? Every moment of my life is hell. You actually seem very happy to me a lot of the time. It's hell. I don't think it'll last, though. I'm actually pretty unhappy, too. If you go down to Hamill, Wayne has a migraine. You had a headache yesterday. He thinks maybe I transferred it to him. In my opinion, so what do you do for fun, Lacey? On the wrong track. Wouldn't you rather be hanging out with your friends? I don't have any friends. Why? I don't know. It's a complete mystery to me. You're a beautiful person, Janet. But objectively, you do make bad decisions. 
Well, who knows? Well, you know. I always had this knowledge that I could make any man fall in love with me if I really tried. And I think maybe it's ruined my life. Can you stop? Stop what? Stop trying. Before the universe existed, there was nothing. And out of nothing came something. Bang. Everything changes in an instant. What are we even talking about? When we talk about others. So what do I do? You want me to tell you what to do? Yes. Quite clearly, not at all the movie I thought I was going to sit down to watch, which is really neat. It's it's why we try to keep ourselves as in the dark as possible, uh, because this was... Yeah, this was so far from what I thought it was going to be. Um, it did have a bit more of a somber tone at the beginning, but it felt, I mean, especially the music helped a lot with this. This this, um, this undercurrent of optimism, even if these people aren't really super happy with their lives, that things aren't really going the way they wanted to, or maybe it's a boredom, or it's not straight up depression, I don't think, because again, that line that was so great that, you know, Thing, this won't last forever. Things will pass. Uh, insightful young girl. Acknowledgement to the the cast, who obviously this is a character study. So we have two people that are at the core of it. Uh, Zoe Zegler, who this is her, uh, the little girl. This is her debut acting experience on the screen. And then Julianne Nicholson, who I love seeing her pop up more and more and more lately. She won an Emmy for Mayor of Easttown, um, but she was in I, Tanya. Uh, she really jumps out in that one. She was so despicable and good in it. And a very different type of movie. Weird, the Ali Yankovic story. So, yeah, I, I do love seeing her pop up more and more lately. Um, this movie is a great look at how you can do something that doesn't feel big, but it's big to the people. It's almost like a Banshees of Inrishim, where... You know, we we established the world, and and for them, it's you know, it's it's overseas, it's in a time period, um, but really, whatever's going on around them doesn't matter because it's about the interactions with the people. It's relationships can be fascinating once you've established characters that you want to see, you care about, um, and and they're probably maybe they're interesting because they're not that interesting because they are average people. And if it's done well, and it's hard to do that well, it's very hard to do that well. But if it's done well, it's still engaging and you can't take your eyes off it. And I got to say that if I was writing the log lines and I'm not the right person to be advising on this because I haven't written nearly enough in my life, um, I, I feel like that log line was misleading to me. The idea of her, this girl's imagination taking over or seeping into, I guess, her reality. I mean, we'll have to see more of that in the actual film because I don't think I saw it at all here in the trailer. And now upon seeing the trailer, we understand that this shot here that they used in the trailer and for the poster is actually the mom and daughter in the bathroom looking in a mirror. Uh, so it's got one of those uh, multiple paneled mirrors in the bathroom. Um, so obviously something reflective and maybe we're getting a hint that reality isn't totally there is one person seeing reality a little bit differently. I mean, the reality of our lives, which is that our world, our reality is what we make of it is how we perceive it. It's real to us. Maybe that's something that we're supposed to take out of this. Maybe in hindsight, once we see the film, that's what we'll take out of this. I feel like that is a movie that when you sit down to watch it, you are going to enjoy it all the way through. Uh, not a summer blockbuster. It did open well. In the world of independent films, it opened very well uh, because it opened in just two theaters, brought in $24,000 per theater. So it actually had the second highest per theater gross uh, of last weekend. That will probably be enough to help it expand for a little bit. I don't know what the overall ceiling will be like for a movie like this. Probably not huge. It's going to be, it's so hard for independent films to, to find a bigger expansion. Uh, but yeah, we will see how much further this expands in the coming weeks. But for the time being, if you are writing, whether it's television or film, if you're writing an intense character study, this might be a great movie to check out.
So thank you for watching. I'll be back soon and Max will be back alongside me. Let us know what are the biggest movies of the summer that you're excited to see and we might cover them right here. Thanks for watching.